Atlas is Avidyne's new Zeus-mounted flight management system for the Part 25 market. It's uh, based on uh, the heritage of our uh, panel-mounted IFD series, but we've got that innovative uh, flight management system capability, but we're bringing uh, synthetic vision, uh, wireless connectivity to ForeFlight and others, and uh, uh, touchscreen capability into the into the Part 25 flight deck. So is this a lot easier to use than a traditional FMS? Well, that's the plan. That's that's the, what we've tried to accomplish is bringing really ease of use, uh, and at a price point that allows uh, folks to put in an Atlas and and extend the life of some of the older. Part 25 jets that may or may not have had even, even had a path to, to WASP capability and ADSB, et cetera. So um, the other option might have been a full cockpit replacement, which was significantly more expensive. So can you show us uh, an example of how it's easier to use? Sure. Uh, entering a clearance, I, I can clear a flight plan and put something in here real quick. I'm going to clear the flight plan here. So if you get a clearance, I can pretty much enter it from the keyboard or from the knob, but of course when you take off, it knows where you're from. Here where it thinks the simulation, but we'll just go through it. So we want to load a waypoint. It'll automatically load, load the nearest VOR. You can select the Jet Airway or the Victor Airway right off of your VORs and get a procedure preview as you roll through the list in real time. Select the Victor 1, and we're going to go south down 2. Let's go, we're going down in New York, let's say. And then enter the waypoint. So the flight plan's loaded, and you're off and running, and there's the entire flight plan in just a few clicks. You know, 20 waypoints just got loaded. So activate the flight plan, and off we go. So how would you pull up the synthetic vision? So on, on the Atlas, uh, because the units are down in the pedestal, it wouldn't make sense to shoot an approach off of that, but we can show on the map the entrail version of synthetic vision. So now, of course, we're climbing up right now, so that it's got a, a, a color contoured terrain and plus a TAWS feature. So as we're climbing out, this is the simulator flying, of course, you'll see other traffic, obstacles on there, uh, airspace alerts. And as we get above 1,000 AGL, our flight plan will show up and we'll be uh, off and running. And then it will also play on an iPad, which I'll bring up here. So now we can look at our flight plan over on the, on the iPad. <clears throat> and we can also bring up ForeFlight at the same time on a, on a split side. screen. Wow. So now I can actually, if I did my flight planning at home, or at dispatch, I can bring it out to the airplane and push that flight plan right into the FMS and then monitor them right on the iPad as we go. And it'll send report position back to the iPad. So what, what kind of airplanes is this really designed for? Well, there's a lot of legacy airplanes that are really the good candidates for it. Uh, the Lear 60, the Falcon 50, the 900s, the Gulf Streams, uh, the older citations like the 560, a uh, bunch of opportunities there. And uh, so those are kind of the low hanging fruit that we're going to go after first because they're looking for an affordable way to get to WAS and extend the life of those airplanes. And so you can, uh, this will help you get LPV approaches to? That's right, WAS LPV, that's it. Gets us into all those airports and all those extra runway approaches that if the ILS was out, they wouldn't be able to land otherwise, so. And what, what is uh, Atlas STC in? Currently, we just got our first STC in the Citation 560 XL. So that was our first one, it just announced. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to start marching through the different airplanes and, and uh, add to the STC list. We've talked to a lot of MROs here at the show who are, of course, they're in the business of making their own STCs. So that will help uh, you know, proliferate that faster. And then how about pricing? Is it a lot less than traditional FMSs? Yeah, it's under $50,000. Um, 
per unit. So for under 100,000, you can have a dual FMS system with the existing flight deck you have. You don't have to go do an expensive software upgrade or, or replace it in, in the case that there is no software upgrade available. <clears throat> These units have what we call uh, glass or GPS legacy avionics support. So it will allow an LPV approach to show up on the PFD. The PFD thinks it's flying an ILS, but it's getting LPV guidance. So we don't have to actually change the, the flight deck. So that saves a lot of money on the installation. Big dollars, yes. We actually got uh, designated Part 25 MROs that we're going to, uh, you know, we're talking to here at the show, some we've already identified. So the best thing to do is contact Avidyne and we'll steer you in the right direction. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.